Nosferatu, non-spherical atomic form factors in Olix 2. A very brief overview of how you run it um, in the latest version of Olix 2, 1.3. If yours doesn't look like this, then you have an old version. Make sure you're running the latest version of Olix 2. You could try this with sucrose, but first I'm going to point you towards another structure. Let's use alanine and load that structure. It's a very small structure, so this should work on almost any machine. We first go to work and refine. Make sure you've got Olix2 refine selected. This is a SIF file I have loaded. That's why this is green. Before we do anything else, we're just doing a few cycles of these squares using Olix2 refine. This extracts everything in the SIF file and you are good to go. Now, in order to use non-spherical form factors, you need to tick this box. That gives you some options and the most important one right now is update table. So you choose the program that you want to use, Tonto, that's always there, it's shipped with Olix2. I'm going to choose Orca. You choose a basis set and you choose a method. I'm going to choose PBE, which is quite fast. You also can choose how many CPUs you want to use. If you only see one CPU in your computer, then that is because you haven't got parallelization enabled. So if you're on Microsoft Windows, you need to install the MPI extensions um, to make this work. We all set up and we're going to refine the structure. So this pushes the structure to ORCA. ORCA does the molecular wave function calculation. Once that's done, this is passed on to Nosferatu, which calculates the atomic, the non-spherical form factors for each of those atoms. So now every atom gets its own form factor and that's saved in this TSC file. And this is why this is called a table. It's like a table that contains that information. What you also get is an affect that is very much lower than it was. And you might have noticed these hydrogen atoms have become anisotropic. That's the default setting that we had earlier. And the distances are now very much closer to what you would expect these hydrogens to be from what we know from neutron structures. Now, the molecular wave function and therefore this TSC file was calculated based on the previous structure, which is now being superseded because these hydrogens have moved out quite appreciably. So what we need to do, we need to update this table in order to continue here. So I update this table, leave everything else the same and refine again. So we are now starting with this structure repeat the calculation, we will get different non-spherical form factors because all the atoms were slightly different and that gives us a new refinement using a new table. And the R factors will probably go down a little bit, yes, 1.33. And we keep doing this until everything is settled. And the quick way to do this is you tick this iterative box and then just press refine and sit back. This could take some time depending on how big your structure is. This is a very small structure. Bigger structures can take quite some time. Now you can do this with just about any molecule, but you do need some fairly good data. You want ideally some fairly strong data. So it has no real limitation. It will also work on relatively weak or standard data. So there's no reason or no need to uh, collect charge density quality data sets. It will work on almost any structure. It will work on structures containing metals. It will work on structures containing disorder. Now, this should almost be done. I would have not normally run it like this because when you update the table at some point, you might want to consider slightly more sophisticated basis sets. There's a whole, choice, a whole lot of choice here. And also you might want to consider to grow this molecule, a cluster of molecules. The molecule does not grow itself, but to create, create a cluster of molecules 
where hydrogen bonding is explicitly included, which may give you uh, slightly different final answers. So it's quite important to be clear what you're doing. But this video really was only about the basic movements and how you get started with Nosferatu. Please read our uh, recent paper in Chemical Science and um, watch out for more videos to come and for training sessions that will happen in the near future. Thank you for using Olix too.